Good morning, Covenant County. Welcome to Good News, Covenant County. Sitting in for the pair of us today is uh, Brother John. Glad to see you out there on this day after Easter. Happy day after Easter. I hope there's still a few chocolate bunnies and peeps left. It's always hard on those two species this time of year. Uh, we're glad to have you with us, and we do hope that you had a, a good Easter. I certainly know one thing for sure, and that is that we had almost perfect Easter weather here in Covington County. Weren't we glad of that? I got out in the backyard uh, and just totally enjoyed just sitting there and soaking up the sun, and I hope you were able to do the same thing as well. It's Monday morning, April the 2nd. I can't say April Fool's today, although I've been accused of being a fool by many people in the past. And uh, before the day's out, I might eliminate all doubt about that as well. Uh, got some local news. It was a, you know, since we're not here on uh, Saturday and Sunday, we, uh, we always have some uh, plenty of news to catch up with on Monday. And this Monday's not an exception to any of those rules. Uh, I guess we'll start out with our first story today, and that's over in Op, Alabama. Big doings in Op. They've had the Rattlesnake Rodeo, and then this week there was an announcement on Friday that the Mizell Hospital, the Mizell Memorial Hospital, is uh, introducing a capital fundraising project for, uh, uh, that, uh, for that facility. They're trying to raise extra funds to modernize and renovate the patient rooms, the lobbies, the patient care rooms, the nursing stations and the waiting rooms on the medical and surgical floors. They're also raising money to try to do some extra work to refurbish and update the uh, surgical facilities over there. Mizell's an important employer in the op market. It, it's uh, the second or third largest employer over there with 250 employees. So it makes a big, big difference in that community. Of course, having a good hospital facility over there is very, very important to that community. Uh, Mizell is, Memorial has basically grown, according to what I can understand, about uh, in seven different phases, with the biggest phase being in the 70s. Uh, and in fact, the 70s was really, really good to Covington County. Uh, it's amazing when you look back how many businesses will be celebrating or will have celebrated their 50th anniversary within the last three years or is celebrating it now. Uh, the 70s was a good time for Covington County and for Andalusia. Of course, the 80s, as the textile industry started to evaporate here in Covington County, uh, a little bit kind of a different climate uh, began to take over. Uh, we're here, the survivors of that, we're proud to, to be here. Uh, a lot of the changes in the Mizell project will be cosmetic, but some of them will be, uh, will be modern. The, the name of the campaign is called I'm In. That means I'm in to uh, upgrading the Mizell facility. Uh, and they'll be taking donations, which I believe will be tax deductible. Uh, and there are, different, there are a number of different uh, levels that you can donate at. I'm pretty sure they'll be glad to take any donation that they can to forward their goal of $750,000. You know, it was that same kind of subscription that uh, built Andalusia Health when it was Andalusia Hospital. Local people working together uh, to build a better facility for Andalusia and for Covington County. Uh, the original funding for one of the, uh, uh, for one of what they'll call, I guess, the showplace room or uh, uh, something like that comes from the S-Step Foundation, although there will be other groups that will donate as well to this. Uh, there are what they're hoping for is an I'm in wall. That that will be donations from people that have made. I would consider large donations, five thousand to twenty-five thousand dollars, or maybe even more. Uh, uh, but uh, they estimate that for a whole room to be redone is $25,000. Now, I want you to think about that. That's, that includes bringing in modern oxygen facilities, modern uh, electronics for the use of the internet in the room, upgrading the data uh, collection uh, equipment in the room, changing the beds. The beds that they've got now, the new beds, they cost about $8,000 a piece is my understanding, but they make it so much easier on the nurses that have to help you especially if you're non-ambulatory. 
But none of that's cheap. None of that's inexpensive. It's all specialized equipment. And Ops doing their best to upgrade their facility to do that. Chris, uh, the uh, person that I'm most familiar with over there uh, that has done that is Chris, that, is, that I've worked with is Kristen Avery. She's their marketing officer, and she's done a good job of getting this news out here. I certainly hope to have Kristen on here uh, in the not too distant future to talk about that. Uh, but uh, the I'm in project is, is what they're seeking is local funding uh, to help that. Now to kick off the funding, the S, as I said, the Step Foundation uh, has donated the money to renovate a showroom. Uh, for any information, if you're interested in giving a donation, or if you're interested in participating in this, or help them raise funds, you can call uh, Kristen Averett at area code 334-493-5511, or Cheryl Hampton at 334-493-9112. They're both there at the Mizell Memorial Hospital, but if you're just feeling generous and you just want to write a check and do it, you know, uh, do it anonymously, all you have to do is uh, make a donation to the Mizell Memorial Hospital Foundation at 702 Main Street in Op, Alabama, 36474. I'll repeat those uh, phone numbers, names, and addresses. The phone number for Kristen Avert is 334-493-5511 or Cheryl Hampton at 334-493-9112. And the mailing address is the Mizell Memorial Hospital Foundation at 702 Main Street, Op, Alabama, 36474. Just as an interesting aside, I thought about this. We, we hear so many complaints about, uh, about the service that veterans get. I still don't know why uh, the VA doesn't contract a certain amount of its services out to rural hospitals like Mizell Memorial and Andalusia Health. Uh, that would certainly help them maintain a level of care in these rural communities where it's it's needed and it would also give local nearby care to an awful lot of these veterans that have issues with their health uh, from their service in various wars. It's something to think about. I, uh, I've written uh, two congressmen and uh, two senators about it and the only response I ever got back was from Jeff Sessions, which I really appreciated. Other big news in Andalusia. I can remember a long time ago when we used to have Winn-Dixie Quick Checker. Quick Check was located down here on East Three Notch Street, besides what is now Darby's uh, Pharmacy. It morphed from Quick Check to Winn-Dixie Quick Check, and then later they moved out onto the bypass and became Win dixie They've been with Andalusia for a long, long time. A lot of us know, and I saw this coming on the internet, that Win dixie has gone through some hard changes in the last few years. Uh, I think it was about four years ago they had to file for bankruptcy reorganization, and we thought that they would pull out of that. They had to close some stores, and in the process they sold some of their drugstore operations, I believe, to what is was Rite Aid and is now Walgreens. That continues as when Dixie had to de declare bankruptcy again about two weeks ago. In the course of uh, declaring bankruptcy, of course, they've had to make many changes. I've seen friends of mine complain about the stores they've closed in Montgomery uh, and other places when Dixie's a part of our community. We've got a fine store down here uh, run by some mighty fine people. Josh Williams and his crew does a a great job down there. Well, it turns out that it looked like that the Andalusia store was going to be able to stay open through the bankruptcy. But for whatever reasons, hook or crook, the Andalusia store has, it appears to be, has been sold to a franchisee from the Piggly Wiggly group. So we'll have the Piggly Wiggly slash Ogly Woggly uh, located in the shopping center out at the intersection of of Three Notch and Martin Luther King uh, where Winn-Dixie has been for years. It's my understanding that the, the building will, the, the actual deal should close at the end of April uh, and, and at that time they will come in and 
probably reset some of the things, refurbish some things in the building, uh, go over uh, the rebranding of product, those kind of things. Uh, and at that time, it will become a Piggly Wiggly. They'll be closed for a couple of weeks uh, as they go through that process. It's also my understanding in some of these markets where they've had these closings already announced that people have been able to go into some of these stores and get some fantastic deals on local groceries. So uh, it's something to look at. It's my, also my understanding that they're going to keep Josh and the 50 employees that work there as either part-time or full-time employees. I sure hope so. The people that are by it also have an operation in Mary Esther, Florida. I've seen it. They do a nice job. They're good people. You know, at one time, Piggly Wiggly was the largest branded grocery chain in the United States. They had over 1,640 stores. Times changed, markets has changed. It's become more of a franchising program. Uh, the original company was started in Kentucky. Uh, it's been bought through many generations. It is now owned by a company, I believe, in New Hampshire. But their concentration of their growth now seems to be in the southeast and in the and the uh, Midwest, which is a good thing. The more people they have affiliating, the better their buying power. Uh, so we're, we're gonna take a wait and see look at what happens at Winn-Dixie as it changes here in Andalusia. Now we're gonna take a break for a minute so we can sell a little advertising and do some public service work, and we'll be back with you shortly.